Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Day Trading Frank. These are the peer, uh, these are the weekly uh, 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 critical broadcasts that I do uh, on my webinars through my webinars. Um, today is November twenty first, two thousand and seventeen, approximately eight twenty six p.m. New York time, Eastern Standard Time. This particular webinar is a free webinar and will be uploaded to the YouTube Clueless Day Trading YouTube channel. Just a point of reminder, the YouTube channel is available for all the free videos, the video cast that I post up, upload and post up there for anyone to view. So not only members of Clueless Day Trading, but if you have friends uh, and, and whoever else that you know who's, who's uh, involved with the markets or interested in learning about the markets or whatever the case may be, uh, give out, uh, tell them to go ahead and uh, subscribe for free to uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, video channel, Crusade Trading YouTube video channel, and um, so that they can basically uh, uh, stay connected, and more importantly, maybe they'll uh, you know uh, come by and join us uh, on in, in um, on the service. Hi, Exeter, can you hear us? Hey, how are you? Good, Exeter. I haven't had a chance to upload the. That one particular ACS from the other night, the one you wanted the the access to, but it should be done, and uh, and you will be automatically sent a link. So just wanted to give you a quick reminder on that, so we haven't forgotten on it. Um, Corey, um, are you in? Yes, sir. There you go. Great hearing your voice, my friend. All right. Okay, okay golf. Um, so as I was saying, uh, a quick reminder to everyone who's attending tonight and who'll be listening to it that the Clueless Eight YouTube. Uh, channel uh clueless a trading youtube channel is available to anyone out there so if you have friends interested you know uh, in 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 learning about the markets or about trading about understanding the realities of what we do uh and why we do what we do and we do it you know quite well uh then feel free to um uh direct them towards uh, uh towards that channel and they can just put their email in and automatically they're connected whenever i put the free stuff up there and uh, that's a it's, it's it's basically a great organic marketing tool. Um, so uh, go ahead and uh, do that and keep that in mind. All right. Uh, so tonight's uh, tonight's session is going to cover some uh, important aspects of what I've been already posting, uh, what has already been working. Um, one of the key th what you're seeing behind you is obviously as we're going to go through this in a few minutes uh, is S and P 500, the face of the market in a technical uh visual form um and um and the bottom line is that the one of the hardest things about markets uh and uh, whether it's stock trading or trading the overall markets is uh, not just the trading part uh, which is certainly not a, a cakewalk as you all know that by now uh but uh, but the predictive analytics of it to sit there and from weeks ago for example in this particular case from from the breakout and the new highs of uh, from September 11th 2017 uh, right there uh, I predicted based on my charts that we would be hitting 2600 plus and uh, regard and, and as you can clearly see it seems like you know centuries ago when you think back to September uh, so many things have happened and happened during the day uh, we have basically climbed our way all the way up and we still have room to climb believe it or not OK, and um, so this predictive analytic, analytics part is the biggest strength of clueless day trading. And um, hi, Nick. Welcome. So um, so the, the, it, it's not an easy task. All right. Uh, some new uh, traders or newer members who are not really well versed in the realities of what really goes on in trading or in the stock markets think that, OK, you know, he said it's going to go there. It's going to go there. So if it doesn't get there in a 24 hour period, all of a sudden they're either leaving the trade or freaking out or 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 or, or saying, hey, the guy's doesn't know what he's doing because you know he said it was going to get there and he didn't get there in the next day or two well it doesn't work like that the fact is that on a you know if you're looking at it from a swing trade perspective i would say a good 80 to 90 percent of my trades get there now during that process of getting there uh you uh, you encounter volatility 
you, and volatility is basically from driving from you know, point A to point Z, uh, and uh, there's going to be detours along the way. Uh, there's going to be potholes along the way. Uh, you might have a, a blown tire. Uh, you might have to stop for gas, um, or the car swerves around and maybe you know kind of moves away from the road and then gets back on it again. So all those things is what we call volatility. You know, it's really as simple as that. Now it's simple, but when real money is involved in the trading markets and you're trading with options of all things, which are the riskiest part of of uh, of, of of the um, uh, of the trading uh, vehicles, and and obviously high risk, high reward. That is the highest reward uh, of of those type of instruments. Um, uh, traders just get you know completely whacked out of shape. I'm saying most retail traders. So what we try to do here at Clueless A Trading is straight to the point here, okay, no fluff, is we cut all the all, all the small talk out. We stick to the technicals. I am very well versed, uh, versed in the uh, very well versed in the fundamental, as you all know. Okay, the um, underlying dynamics of why things are happening uh, and all the reasons behind it. I try to keep my members uh, um, as uh, as informed and educated as possible. And many of you who have been with me for many months, or let's say since we started back in April 15th of 2014, wow, it's only been three years and change. It seems like 10 years. Um, we're like we're like babes in the woods compared to all the other services out there, but we're out there. You know, we're in the top quartile, the top 2%, or maybe the top 1%, or maybe the top 0.1% of performance when you look at it that way. So. And so the age doesn't matter. The fact that we've only been around for three years and change and we have a lot to grow. I'd like to be three years and change instead of 13 years and change and saying I know it all. Because the fact is, I don't know it all. But do I lay down the roadmap, what we call the predictive analytics? I absolutely do. Is my performance up there with, the, with, with making some very hardcore predictions in both individual stocks or the markets? As you can see behind you in the form of the S&P 500, absolutely. Does that help people? Well, if they want to help themselves, it certainly helps people. People want to freak out on every 10, 15 minutes or one hour of gyrations um, of, in the market. Well, I can't do anything about it. On that note, let me just say one thing. We're all guilty of it. When real money is involved in trading, we all are in some way or form MOHTR, monkey on hot tin roofs. So what we try to do here at Clueless State Trading, I certainly try to do it as a discipline. It's like going to the gym every day and working out, which I should be doing if you ask me. Uh, but the fact is that um, you constantly have to keep on trying. There are many who are too stubborn, many who basically feel that, okay, I'll just take it, you know, I'll just, I'll just, you know, take the trade. And they do well. You know, a lot of them do well. They take the trade, boom, the trade goes. But then when the volatility hits the market, they are completely bent out of shape. They don't know what to do. And volatility is there. It's omnipresent. It's there 24-7. We know that, right? Pre-market, after-market, middle of the market, early morning. And the volatility goes both ways. Buy, sell, confusing, flatlining markets, all kinds. Because that's what the algo HFT or short. Uh, uh, for alg uh, algorithmic high frequency trading black boxes, those are the automated high frequency trading machines which move the market in nanoseconds. One minute Google's up five, you turn around your head, it's down seven. Amazon struggling yesterday, today up 14 and change. Alerted the, uh, the uh, alert yesterday on the 11:30 and the 11:32 and a half calls. They were up 179 percent at the close. So the fact is that all of you, especially the ones who are members and who are somewhat active, because if you're not active in the markets, you will never you never understand what's going on. Like they say, you got to have skin in the game. If you don't have skin in the game, you can watch the market as much as you want. You can see great, great, great monster profits being made. Or you might say, oh, I'm glad I wasn't in the market because it was down 100 points. Well, then what happens? Every other week, we get these type of days, markets up 140, 160, and the market is trending higher. So just sitting on the sidelines, doing nothing, 
and then and then waiting for some perfect moments and the perfect moments come the perfect moment was for example yesterday the perfect moment for example was when we dipped hard here on a mini flash crash back on the 25th of october those are the perfect moments but the the one who are primarily focusing on their emotional demons and i mean that i don't say that lightly okay primarily focusing on their emotional demons and completely ignoring and negating the power of power of technical expertise or tactical expertise as delivered and packaged and delivered not that you have to you have to dissect it and cut it and slice it the only reason i do these webinars and explain all this stuff so that when i'm putting this stuff across throughout the day that you can look at it and have some modicum of understanding as to what I'm putting across. That's the only reason I do it. I'm not trying to make you guys like some sort of like, uh, like I've said it before many times, PhD in, in technical analysis. I'm certainly not, but I certainly have a method. And like a, one of my old bosses used to say, you eventually, you, you win in the markets by focusing on the method and not focusing on the madness. Most retail traders and institutional traders and good portion of the media always focus on the madness in the market. And the madness in the market is volatility, all this stuff. They don't seem to focus on the method. Have you heard, other than a few sharp technical uh, 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 analysts who come on TV, Rick Ross and people like that, uh, um, Katie Stockton, she doesn't even come that often um, on, the, on, on, on the media. Uh, who basically make some sense otherwise they're all trend followers if you're just a trend follower and just follow the prices you're a lemming and you're going to get hit and you're going to fall over the cliff i will keep on repeating this all the time because that's part of the mental calibration of you trying to help you become somewhat of a more robotic trader by looking at the charts by making a determination and by taking action that's it period done no more to be said. On that note, going back to the first point, predictive analytics is extremely hard. The fact that I do it constantly, that I'm projecting. Remember, there's an old saying you guys have heard many, many times, trade what you see. Yes, you guys have heard that. Right, Trent, you've heard that a zillion, sure. a zillion yeah, times. Absolutely. Trent is a very well-informed member. Uh, you know, you used to track sock tweets, you track other trading rooms and stuff. They say trade what you see. What kind of garbage is that trade what you see? If I trade as if what you see is real, within 15 minutes, it turns upside down. So trade what you see is, a, is, is like a nice little mantra to spread around for a sales pitch. It's no longer like that. It hasn't been like that for years. Because by the time you see what you see, it's too late. You got to read in between the lines, read the tea leaves. That's what we trade. That is what Clueless Say Trading is all about. To identify those zones, not just BTFD, I'm not going to repeat it, by the you know what, but by the tactical BTFD or tactical BTD, by the dip, the tactical dip, which makes some technical sense. And I have a reasoning behind why I'm aggressively buying there. If you notice today, I was somewhat, okay, took down profits, selective positions, but somewhat blasé about the markets because I'm seeing certain things, which I might be totally wrong. Markets could be up like at the open 100 points. It's done it before and I'll get whacked on my few um, uh, VIX calls, which are extremely cheap, by the way, and that's not for tomorrow. That's for like two weeks out. Uh, and, um, and, 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 and the S&Ps, which are really cheap and that's for tomorrow. So let's hope they work out. But I know it's going to work out, okay? If I have to jog, juggle it and cost average down, my cost is about a buck and change. They closed at around 80 cents or something. After hours, they were a little bit higher, like 90 cents. All I need is just a little little blip in the market to be nicely positive and, 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 and uh, profitable. So the point is that please, not for my sake, because remember, we all like each other. We are a civilized community here at Clueless A Trading. But we don't pay each other's bills. We don't deal with each other's stresses, right, when it comes to finances. So it's all up to you. Trading is a solo sport. We are in a group community 
but we're not like flipping each other's trading books and say, okay, I'm going to just move trends, uh, Apple around a little bit because I like that. No, you don't do that. You do it on your own book. Focus on yourself, self-improve and move forward. On that note, the market is basically coming into Thanksgiving. I have said it before. I'll say it again. Review my past video cast. Thanksgiving week is generally a bullish week. Doesn't mean we're not going to get a plop. I remember Thanksgiving week, I think it was last year or the year before, where we were down like 300 points right before Thanksgiving. I'm like, what? The day before, which is tomorrow. Is that a possibility? I don't think so. I think a quick tactical reset is a possibility, but not, uh, uh, not, um, uh, not a crash. But you never know these days. You know, I wake up every morning. I have no idea where the futures are going to open. Yes, some days I know. For example, last night I posted out when I saw the Chinese market going bonkers, Hong Kong going crazy. I knew that th that was going to flow over to um, to Asia. I'm sorry, from Asia to Europe when Europe opened at four in the morning and that would spill over to the U.S. But there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees. We know that. So we always have to be prepared. And that preparation is this particular one chart that will guide you. And I said, this is the only chart you need for the month of September. I mean, the month of October, specifically for the month of November. You know, I've said that just in the past uh, uh, webinar that I did over the weekend, both the ACS group session as well as on the free one. This is the only chart that you need to at least understand the backdrop of what the markets are doing. And specifically for SPX traders and SPY traders, long and short. This is the only chart that you need. And what I'm putting this across, you better understand what I'm showing. Now, some people actually understand a lot better because all they do is look at the arrows. And this, this, this guy has always been right with this stuff overall. And so I'm just going to follow the arrows. Well, great. That's great technical analysis. I mean, I would personally think that uh, if, uh, if I wasn't inclined to looking at these pictures, which speak a thousand words or a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars, okay, or a million bucks, right? Whatever the case may be, um, then I wouldn't be excited. I'd just say, hey, just look at the arrows. If it, you know, you said it's going to go there, it's going to go there. I'll do it. Well, some guys are like that. Good for you. But when volatility really hits and it gets like this, then they have no idea what the heck they're looking at. All right. So, saying all that, let's get into this. Any questions on my first uh, opening? Dialogue, monologue. No, yes. My good friend Mike here. My good friend Mike here said my charts should be in at MoMA at Museum of Modern Art because Mike was visiting New York and I was pretty tied up with everything going on. Family stuff as well as work and I couldn't meet him. So Mike, thank you for that. Yes, my chart should hang out at well, some of my charts, not the these ones, but the real colorful ones, the real dynamic ones coming out of Thinkorswim or Quad uh, uh, platform should be at the Museum of Modern Art. Maybe we'll do it one day because I have thousands of charts that are archived, right, in Dropbox. So you just pull it, just print a bunch of them and put it out there at the Museum of Modern Art. Let's do it. Thank you. All right. Now, let's take a look at what what. Uh, 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 what's up? There's nothing much to explain other than the same thing that I've been talking about back, back and forth, back and forth. The market was in a wide range. If you look at a range perspective, that range was 2594, which was last hit back around the 9th of November. The market in between created multiple, multiple patterns, which basically resemble Ws, which are dragon bullish. Bear with me one second.
Sorry about the uh, interruption. Uh, you guys still there? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, great. All right. So, um, so okay. Then uh, to continue with what I'm saying. So basically, we had multiple head and shoulders, hammer reversals. It's a reality. Okay. It's not just like uh, 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 funky stuff. Uh, and then and and we have traded each one of them. We don't need to trade every one little candle, but we have traded each of these large patterns. The last of the really bullish patterns, which was explained prior in one of my prior webinars, but just to go over it, was this extremely powerful move that happened uh, on the 15th, which was only last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, we crashed. That was the crash before the market. Then a severe pull up right after the market open, right after the market open. And that was a bullish engulfing bar where the body of the green candle encompasses, engulfs the body of the red candle, very bullish. Then that went up, shot up, threw out, uh, 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 spit out a whole bunch of traders or whoever tried to get in at the top of the candle uh, and then created another little blip, all fake outs. You know, in the old days they call it fake outs, but we call it volatility. You know, fake outs and fake ins or whatever, fake unders, you know, those are old terms. This is the nature of volatility. They're always doing this. That's what the machines are doing. So and then that created a um, a very powerful, very condensed. Dragon bullish pattern. I'm sorry, condensed inverse head and shoulder. There's your head. Here's your left shoulder. Here's your right shoulder. And you can see this happen continuously, repetitively throughout the market in individual stocks, but mostly in the indices. And then just a ripper. That ripper hit the uh, hit the uh, mid range right here, right there, that red line. Let me clean this out, remind you all, which is a neckline. That's your neckline. Remember, a head and shoulder pattern looks like this. You have a left shoulder. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but anyway. And then you have a neckline, and then it attempts to go to the neckline. It kind of moves around a little because the neckline is a resistance, and then it breaks out, and then it breaks out. Boom! That's a neckline breakout. Gets to the top of uh, 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 top of the previous range. That's where the green line is, and bingo, creates a inverted hammer. That is similar to an inverted hammer that I identified here today. So I'm not going to just go there and say, oh, yeah, market's going higher, so I'm just going to have to put my money in there. No. Protect your profits. We'll see. We don't have time to get in. What's the rush? So that's why today, throughout the day, well, in between uh, 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 taking in profits or, uh, or, or putting out some swing trades and stuff like that, when I notice an inverted uh, hammer right there, they're all very similar. It's basically looks like a hammer falling. It's like a Chinese firecracker falling down instead of going higher, right? That's a hammer, and that's an inverted hammer right there. Now, is this a real inverted hammer, or is it is it a, a, where we are going to just you know fall? Uh, and it's it, and these falls are not even that bad. They're just a reset. Six, seven, eight. S&P points, which are roughly about 42 to 50 Dow points, not the end of the world. And then you get this sudden collapse in the market, a large one, which looked like it was going to go all the way down here. But no, that turned two, and that was on the 19th. Now, all this is happening within days here, guys. So if you're thinking of a song and dance, oh, a correction will happen over weeks and months. No, it doesn't work like that now. All right, now it's fast and furious. Boom. And then it basically resets, goes higher. And the simplest way that all you guys can follow it. And if and some of you are much more advanced in technical analysis, you work with me on the advanced coaching sessions over the weekends, sometimes on the weekdays, weeknights after the market. You use different uh, other indicators and such. Um, you you know that this is the simplest basic form. There are many other ways we can we can look at uh, look at all, all the internals. Once it did that, it reset. What does reset mean? That the stochastics basically come down below on, you know, it gets oversold. That's really what it means. That's it. Now, in a powerful trending market, the reset sometimes don't happen. Sometimes don't happen. 
So anyway, so look at this. This is a very this is this was your left shoulder that I've pointed all this out, but we're rehashing it because I want these things to be just second nature to when you're looking at my charts. And when I'm putting out these arrows, you know, okay, I see what the pattern is putting. But more importantly, I even put out these title. These are like ongoing learning tutorials. Left shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder. There'll be another right shoulder, believe me. Okay. But at this point, that's, you know, there was your neckline. This was your first neckline. This was your second big one, the big green line. And we just said, we just ripped up on that. We ripped up, kept on going, kept on going, got up into, you know, into this new. We made a new high on the on the on the uh, uh, S and P, as well as I believe, yeah, we certainly made a new high on this. Uh, you know, what am I thinking? Uh, hold on one second. The S and P, the new high today was twenty. Well, it says year high twenty five ninety seven. Uh we went above that. We went to twenty six hundred. But anyway, on for the for the futures that we do uh, uh, use uh, to track the markets. We went out into outer space, and then boom, we created this uh, mini. It's a, it's a mini. It's not even like a major inverted hammer. Now, will this inverted hammer be similar to this, where you can trade um, for a couple of hours, maybe, uh, or a day or so, where it corrects? I have no idea. We shall see. But generally speaking, once you get an inverted hammer, see the, see the uh, similarity. I'm gonna zoom in, and you get this type of stuff. That's the nature of it. What happens is it gets up there, and I put an arrow up here uh, using this megaphone pattern that with the maximum move we could get was 2602. Anyway, we got to uh, we got to 2600.40, and then it just slipped a little bit. It's nothing dangerous about it, but it slipped a little bit. So what it generally means is there was a big seller at that point. We'll try to identify that when we look at the E-minis on the next chart on Think or Swim. So put out a few shorts out there. Let's see if it works. Now, saying all that, you can see what's going on. Features are strong. Remember, Asian markets are open up higher, will open up higher based on the back of the U.S. markets. Uh, and then we'll see what the Europeans do, and then we'll see what happens tomorrow. Now, what happens in the morning has no bearing during the day. All of you traders know that. It's a question of what are the technicals doing. So what I'm looking at very simply is I'm looking for a reset of this large movement into severe overbought zone at 120. That's pretty severe. You can see that on the on the stochastics. Let me make this a bit of There you go. So you got uh, you got it like a like a little thing here. Every single time it gets up to this level. And today was high. It was at 120. Like wow. And it's simple why this happened. There was a good bunch of these hedge funds and stuff who constantly keep on shorting the market, and they got blasted. You know, you don't move like this just because the you know they pardoned the turkey. All right. So it's some, from a technical standpoint, a big squeeze happened. And that squeeze created a boof, monster move, breakout, where I thought the market was going to go. Real fast, real quick. Do I love days like this? Not really. Take some nice profits along the way. I like, which I think all of you should. But that's when a lot of you just become like, whoop, like all scared and like, oh my God, like nobody's talking, nothing. I love these zones, guys. Buy cheap, buy low, sell high. Remember that? Well, when it's time to buy low, there are few, very few of traders, especially the emotional ones, to be seen. These are the points which are the perfect moments. All right? As close to perfection as you can get. Not necessarily this, in my opinion. It doesn't mean we can rip higher and get to 2608, 2008, but that's fine. But what I'm getting at is that when we get down towards these levels, and I pinpoint, you know, and things get nice and oversold, 
That's when you want to get the most aggressive. That's not the time to hide under the couch. Yeah, and call mommy or grandma or whatever, your nanny. You know, saying, you know, you're scared. Come on, guys. All right? That's the way it's done. That's the way it's done in the world of tactical trading where you can make the most bang out of your buck. Don't get super excited at severe overbought levels. Don't have to get nervous either. You have to protect your profits and you have to get some hedges in place. What are hedges? Just in case we pull back and reset, make some money on the downside. You don't go around shorting Amazon and you don't go around shorting like every stock in town because they might they'll kill you. But you can do it through the form of SP, SPX puts, IWM puts, RUT puts. You can buy some VIX calls. Good stuff. So what I'm looking for, real simple, that going on and on, is I'm looking for a reset. I get a reset. This is a one hour. This is a fast stochastics. So it'll happen quicker than a slow stochastic. Then I'm a buyer again, depending on the shit. Not just, just this. Remember, look at a lot of different things, not just this chart. I'm, 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 I'll be looking at the size of the candles. If I see a big breakdown candle and this is all the way down here, I'll wait a little bit. Because remember, we got oversold here and we continued to fall. So it's always, you have to also look at the candle dynamics. Well, that's my job to put that across. But when I'm putting out across, at least you know what the heck you're looking at. All right? Like we say, you know, like they say in New York, capish. All right? There you go. Now, next move here. At this point, this is looking like a consolidation channel. A consolidation channel, max move down, in my opinion, is going to be somewhere around 25. Uh, just follow the lines. Somewhere around, uh, and where the, the uh, next arrow is around 25.89. That's only six points from where we are. So I'm not going to be like right there. Some people will be getting all like, okay, we need to really short the market. Not necessarily, because by the time this is the, remember, this is the break. We are right now resting on resting on the on on the breakout level right now as we speak all right right there there's big fat green line that we broke out the previous high that i said we'd go to so right now we're there we're right there as we speak in real time the then the uh, then one below that is was was uh, uh, another breakout level another green line that's why you have an arrow here remember these arrows are not just randomly generated because of some uh, emotional whim i'm having like uh, oh i feel like putting a green arrow there no these are all very very specific a guided roadmap that's why i call it a roadmap okay so there you go most I can see the market coming down on, on a quick, swift, swift pullback is 2580, which would be fantastic. If I can get 15 points on those co uh, puts, which are around 80 cents or so on the SPX puts, the 2590s, that's a, that's a, that's a, the two, 300% mover. All right, right there. Am I going to get it? I have no idea. We shall see. So that's it. That's the roadmap. You got to you got to look at the stochastics. I'm looking for a reset. Let me zone it down here. I have the arrows. The big fat arrow means that sort of max pullback I'm looking for. And in between, we have support here. What we're what we're talking about right now. Futures down about one point. We have support here. I think the market, if it really wants to move, take another leg higher into 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 Thanksgiving after uh, at the end of uh, tomorrow. Now tomorrow is also Wednesday. Remember what Wednesdays are. They are reset days. 90% of the time, Wednesdays are red days. Don't forget that. Is it a rule? Absolutely not. But I'm just saying. Because that, that's the hump, the hump day and that resets for all the different... You know, there's a reason behind it. All kinds of options, calibrations and deltas and gammas and thetas that all the machines do and institutions do for the Friday weekly options expiration. So it's sort of a reset day. So saying all that, right there there's nothing more to explain on this any quick questions on this chart because this is the only roadmap you'll need you don't need to look around like 20 different charts any questions no yes i think we're good okay good thanks friend all right let's move on this is another simple version of this. This is a 15-minute version. 
Now, if you're a fast trader, you want to look at this 15 minute version and you want to see like you want to scalp something for the next half an hour, 45 minutes, use this chart. It looks a heck of a lot better than whatever 15 minute chart you're looking at. Well, well, some of you might have charts which are fantastic and it certainly share that with me because I'm always learning. So saying all that, this is your 15 minute version. You had that, you, you, you still see the reversal hammer. It's a little bit noisier because you're zooming into things, right? Obviously, the one hour is cutting out a bunch of the noise. And this is where we are. So pattern wise, this pattern symmetry, in my opinion, can get filled. It's only a few points. Remember, I have seen nine out of 10 times, wherever the market broke out of, the machines will take it there to retest it. Why? Because some people, some funds got heavily ambushed right on this breakout, early in the morning. Not early in the morning. This breakout happened at, uh, at 9.15, right at the market open. Right at the market open, 9.30, right? So they got ambushed. So a lot of the market makers and stuff, I don't want to get into it too much, they want to re re recoup back some of their money. So what they do is they, they short the market. That's maybe why we had a spinning top, inverted hammer. And they try to bring it down here so they could at least recoup their money because they got ambushed here. Trust me, I've seen this happen way too many times. It also looks like a bit of a dome pattern, which I'm not going to get into right now. We shall see. But anyway, this is another perfect precision roadmap. And if I if I zoom out, you're going to see where we are. Bears will tell you. So this is so this is where we were back on. Uh, uh, believe it or not, this was. Uh, well, I already said that 8th of November, right there. So all we did was we moved around this very large, big, big wide zones, hit 2555. Just just uh, last Wednesday. And then we finally broke out today. So in effect, if you want to look at it real simply, the market didn't do anything since the 9th of November. 12 days later, it breaks out. That's a, that's a bullish thing. So the bottom line is not like we went from the 9th of November where we hit the last high, the previous all-time high. And then we just kept on going nuts. No, we took a nice detour through all these different geometrical tactical patterns, created a very defined head and shoulder with the head, left shoulder, right shoulder, walked you guys through this perfectly. And then we broke out. We busted a move. So we just simply broke out from here. So somebody can look at it and say, you know what? We just started the breakout, in my opinion. Yeah, we kind of just started the breakout. Doesn't mean we can't have a quick reset and stuff like that that I explained. But honestly speaking, we just started the breakout. So this could be the next leg of the next the next leg of the move, which continues through the latter part of December. And I believe that. Want to hear a more long-winded explanations? Listen to my previous webinars. It doesn't mean we're not going to come and retest this and maybe fall down here and retest this another right shoulder or even test a right shoulder here. All of this can happen, but so far, so good. So far, so good. So if this is the case, uh, uh, the zoom in. This is not looking bearish at any point here. Then we are looking at a high of around 2607. That's 11 points or 26, yeah, 2609. So that's uh, that's 14 points from here, from where we are tonight. That's another 64 points on the Dow, which takes us into, you know, takes us 60, 70 points higher. So far, all the channels are intact. This uptrend that started on. Um, this uptrend that started on on the 15th of November last Wednesday 
and, and on a shorter term basis that started yesterday right here is not broken, is not broken unless we break 25.89. And this, this uptrend from here, I'm going to draw one more line. And these things are important because you guys are trading out there, but a lot of you are trading blind. Okay? And you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is another uptrend line. So this uptrend line is not broken till 25.76. So that's 20 points from here, roughly 100 to 120 dot points. So we could fall 120 dot points, retest these shoulders, and still be A-OK. -okay. Individual stocks will get you know hit, obviously if you're not watching, but I'm just talking about the general directional bias on the markets. That's it. Let's take a quick look at, uh, this was like a giveaway. Some of you did it, I'm very proud of you. Many of you didn't, I don't know what to say. You should be ashamed of yourself if you ask me from a trader perspective, absolutely. This was, I, I talked about the megaphone all the way when it hit this breakout level. I mean, uh, this was the previous breakout level. It tested it picture perfect. If somebody doesn't believe in technical analysis and they just look at this one particular chart and the trade that was executed on it on a swing basis, because I hear a lot of excuses from different people. You know, I don't have time, you know, to follow. You're very good, but you know, these things are moving too fast. It's all garbage. It's all a hogwash. It's like a bunch of bucket full of excuses. You can do swing trades. There are so many multiple swing trades that are given throughout the week, throughout the weeks. Some of these biotechs are still going on and on. Or some of these techs are going on and on, like Square and Team and Micron. I mean, forget it. It's a whole bunch of them. And then there are the active ones which move around quite a bit. So this one was another case, and I've explained this in my other videos, that when you go into these type of swings, it doesn't just end in one day. It at least continues for a bunch of days. Well, this did. This started, we, you were alerted to buy the RUT and the IWM back on the 15th, which was last Wednesday. Now, actually, I started here. I started last Tuesday or so, or Monday. So it slipped down a little bit. I said, buy. This retest was successful. It closed the gap here. One, two, three, four, five. One full week. Kept on going higher. As you all know, the original calls, which were at 1480, we kept on shifting them out. 1490, 1500s. The 1500s went from two and a half bucks or something like that. I can't remember the top of my head. It's sick. To 22 to 20. That's 1,000 percent. And I said it before. Was you know this is the, that those type of 1,000 point trades. And one of our loyal members here, JB, you know, said let's do those one. You know, let's get that thing up 1,000 percent. Well, I deliver it to you guys. And I know many of you took advantage of it. Some of you, you know, were right back and said did really great with IWM. Very proud of you. Great. This trade is not over yet, in my opinion. It looks like it might create a small, now it's created a V-shaped pattern. I would call it a cup. A cup generally creates a small handle. So it pulls back, let's say to, uh, you know, it closed to exactly where I said it's going to go. 1520, previous high, went to 15, 4, 15. Year high was 1515. It went as high as 151953. Call it 1520. So it creates a small handle. Things cooperating on the other macro side of the market. They'll bust a move. And that move will be the next wave up to 1560. Telling you that right now. For a pittance of those monthly fees that you guys pay me, you're making thousands or have the ability to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on these trades with a small amount of money. All right. So it's like giving away free money just through pure tactical precision charts that I'm delivering to you guys. And this is just one example of it. Now, I believe that the handle is important. 
because then it creates this was the left shoulder kind of a rolling left shoulder and and then it creates a nice rounded let's say um pulls back 10 12 points on one quick pullback day creates a right shoulder which allows us to have that bounce up there now in order to have the bounce up there that's pretty significant from 15 20 to 1560 but it's going to happen rather quickly but before it does i always call it the slingshot routine in order to you know in order to throw the, uh, the 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 catapult, let's say the catapult routine or the slingshot routine, you got to pull it back. The rubber band and the big powerful uh, uh, thing has to be pulled back in order to gain kinetic energy. If any of you ever studied physics or at least passed physics in high school or college, all right, I'm sure all of you did. Um, so, so you, it gets has to pull back. The same thing with markets. Shoots higher, has to pull back gain energy and then catapults forward that's what bull markets do so i don't know what else to say about this chart it's like clean it's just right there there is a very wide band i'm not even going there 1640 maybe we get that you know but that's like the, that's just and uh there we are any questions on the rut I mean, this is that this is definitely bullish. See, Nick is excited because she finally took these trades and made money. <laughs> in, in, in I've, I, been, let, I've been taking some of them. I know, I know that. I'm just kidding around, but yeah. But I, <laughs> I know when people are excited about a certain trade. Okay, I read people like a book. You did very well with them, and uh, and you'll be do better with them because nothing is more exciting in the market than doing great with a certain trade. All of a sudden, you start to like that particular instrument or pattern you're like yeah i'm gonna start looking at it when he puts that chart on that this and that that's just the nature of the beast you know well uh, so this is the megaphone pattern and we broke through the megaphone and nothing more to say about this iwm no this is actually the nasdaq i mean this is pre yesterday i drew this line here okay and our our uh uh, uh i don't know if he's here is dano here all right, Dano is here. So Dano uh, texted me, uh, PM me on the side and said, "Hey, uh, is this a? Uh, you know, I called it a. I called it a. Basically, it basically was a cup and handle. See, right there. I even sketched it out a little bit, showing you my uh, artistic prowess. All right. So I used that uh, free form to sketch it out. He said, "Hey, that's in between. That's that's within a very large, very large head and shoulder. Is that correct?" I said, "Yes, correct." I even asked him that he was so correct that he should go buy himself a nice lollipop, okay? Because that's the trader term of saying, you know, good job, get a lollipop, all right? And if you uh, do a really bad job, then you slap yourself on the back of the head. It's really quite simple. Those are two routines traders should follow, all right? Um, so bottom line is, um, you're right, Dano. This was within a context of doing this, and this is that, you know, big bullish uh, uh, thing. And, and look what happened today. Complete ripper. Broke out to new highs. CNBC screaming, NASDAQ at new highs. Whoopee. It's not that hard to see. We ain't seen the best yet, if you ask me. Because if you look at this chart here, this is a large rising wedge. Now listen carefully. Why NASDAQ stocks still have a significant amount of room to move higher. They think Apple can go to 180. I think Apple can go to 180. Okay? And they'll make it happen. They'll just make it happen. Doesn't matter what you think or what Kramer thinks or what your buddies on stock twits thinks or other places and what your head thinks and whatever. Big cap stocks can go bigger. So saying all that, if you notice one thing here, this is a rising wedge. We hit and listen carefully. We hit this this massive long tail hammer reversal at six thousand on the on the Nasdaq 100 futures. At six thousand, we're going to six. You know, we'll go to sixty-five hundred. Now, why, technically speaking? Because look, and this means that the whole basket and kitten caboodle of a lot of these big cap tech stocks and small cap tech stocks, or in this case, it's a Nasdaq one hundred. So one hundred of the big cap tech stocks, they're basically going to rise in tandem. So this was your rising wedge. You hit the upper end of the wedge, and it, and you basically went into a large consolidation channel. That consolidation channel tried to get back into the wedge, failed. 
Now it's trying to get back into the wedge. So even if it fails, you go to 6,500. That means Apple's going to tag on a couple more points. That means Tesla's going to go to 330, 335. That means Google's going to hit 1060, 1075. That means Facebook is going to go to 185. I'm giving you the bullish scenario, okay? And that means Netflix is going to hit 200 again. Priceline's going to hit 1800. All that will automatically take you there. Now, is that a given? Nope. But is it a possibility? Absolutely. Are we overbought here? Absolutely. Can we have a reset? Absolutely. A reset simply means it does this. Quick little drop to test out the breakout and then a fling higher. Slingshot routine. Um, Where's the IWM that I wanted to show? Oh, so here's another stock that, you know, yesterday I put out there, there was no technical damage. No technical damage. I wrote that down on Tesla. Because there was no technical damage, even though this big red candle, which was worth a good solid uh, 10 points or more from the bottom. From the bottom, it was actually 11 points. I'm sorry. From the bottom, it was mm, roughly about nine it was uh, yeah like nine points this fat candle was red it looked like this but it was still within the box i'm sure one of you read my comments on the thing read my comments when i put those trades out of what i'm thinking about a particular stock because that's why twitter is so great for me to put it put it out there in a few words so i said it's within the gap fill this was still trending higher the trade's going the trade went there was some internal news on the Model 3 and stuff, which uh, I, I heard later on, which was positive. Remember, technicals precede fundamentals. By the time the news is out, the technicals are already, already given you an early sort of trigger. And the news helps as a catalyst. This is definitely bullish. It doesn't mean it's going to go all the way higher. It simply means that it can hit 330. If it busts a move, then this is the bear kill zone right here. Okay, and you guys know what a bear kill zone is. That's when the shorts just die, a painful death. That's when it, the stock just literally moves for two days in a row, three days in a row, hits 362 and completes the pattern. Do I think that's possible? I think so. If they release some other stuff without getting into real details, we already know the bad news about Tesla. They keep on talking about the Model 3 delays, blah, 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 blah. And we know all about the haters from... Jim Chanos to Bob Lutz, who used to run GM, who just, just spews hate on Tesla. But he's been doing that since Tesla was a non-existent company and just was a concept on paper because it's a big threat to their industry. So that old man just keeps on spewing hate, Bob Lutz. You know who I'm talking about? You've seen him on TV when he talk. They always bring him. CNBC just bring him like clockwork. Anytime Tesla's down like five bucks, they'll bring Bob Lutz. I'm dead serious. And he'll sit there and say, oh, it's a, just a figment of people's imagination. He's just a con artist, blah, blah, blah. Okay, thank you very much. I don't really care. All right, all I know is I'm looking at my charts. But generally speaking, when you get Bob Luss in there spewing that much hate and, and vitriol on, on Tesla, it's time to buy it, psychologically speaking. So this is good. Even on the short term, you can get about, uh, you can get about uh, up to, and that's why I say just trade this chart. Forget about anything else. Here's your upper range. This is 325, 323. So that's six to eight points. You don't want six to eight points in Tesla? Okay, fine. Then you don't get a lollipop, okay? How about that? You don't get any ice cream either. Forget about getting a Model 3. So this is a very simple chart. It's not that, yeah, it is a very simple chart to trade. I'm not going to like, you know, babysit anyone and make any money. This is a very simple chart to trade. You could trade this very, very tactically. Lower end of the gap, as long as this is cooperating, lower end of the gap. If it's way overbought, well, obviously you don't want to get there. Every time it gets up towards these levels where it's extreme and some of you start getting excited at the last, the last like couple of yards left, okay, of the run. Uh, of, of wherever you're trying to get to, well, I look at this and I say, no, -uh, not going to go. So don't just get excited with prices. It is going to do nothing for you other than heartaches. 
and you know exactly the people I'm talking to here. I know exactly the people I'm directing this to. Stop just looking at prices. Look at the charts along with the prices. Respect my hard work. I don't need your respect. I'm doing my job. I'm a hard worker. But respect what I'm putting out there. It will only help you. Stop making your own opinion up about blah, 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 blah. It means nothing. I have seen more about the markets than many of you put together. Markets don't give a crap about our opinion. Should we have an opinion? Absolutely. But don't just trade on that opinion. More often than not, you're going to be wrong. And it's been recorded and shown repeatedly. Pattern completion comes into play here, right there, 332. That's the first pattern completion. That's when we had that big move up and a double barrel move down off this of this uh, uh, very powerful downtrend line, this red line that starts all the way up here at 386. Sudden move down, right? This looked really good. Looked like you're going to at least break out. Nope. So respect that pattern. And this is the one I'm talking about. If everything keeps on doing this then the <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna draw this out I believe me it's gonna happen the first leg of the move where it hits major resistance is 332 right there any questions any questions no Okay, good. Now here's a chart of, and that's why I don't like chasing markets at new highs within days. I want a little reset and I'll get in there really hard depending on the condition of the market. I see a VIX chart like this, creating a major double bottom. I'm gonna keep on buying those VIX and putting them on the side for 50 cents, 60 cents, 70 cents. And I'm going to sell it when it, the VIX hits 10. That's just a minor move. And you will get 100 to 150% on your money. We have done that many times before. Always stay in short. So if I want to, if I, if I ask, and be honest, okay? Because we don't like all kinds of like fake responses. Just a quick question. If I want to show our hands. How many people bought some hedges today, meaning some protective through VIX calls or cheap S&P puts? I'm not even going to call names. Just somebody just said, you know, I did or yeah. didn't. I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. So it's the same two people saying it. Who's the, who's the first person who did that? The lady's voice. Nick. Okay, Nick and Trent. What yeah. about Corey? Just say yes or no, that's all. Because this is just a survey. Corey, did you buy any protective hedges today? Yes, I bought the 25. I, did, I, did, I said a yes or no, just a yes. So yes, you did. Good. Dano? Yep. JB? Of course. Okay, Mike? Who's uh who's Todd? Todd, can you identify yourself please? Uh Todd, asking a question. Name sounds very familiar, but Todd, who are you? Huh? I mean if it's nobody if it's nobody else, it's me, Trent. Oh because yeah, okay. that's my real name is Todd. No, yeah. I know, because I see Todd, then I see you. So I thought there was a different Todd. Oh, okay. It's probably me if there's not a different Todd. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. So you're like you're like a yeah. phantom. You're showing up in two different places. <laughs> like, wow. Okay. Uh, no problem. Yeah, this was, of course. I know. I know that. Um, all right, good. So this is a good sign that all of you actually took some protective measures. So generally speaking, and that's good. I'm happy. Um, so generally speaking, you're looking at a fifth. A, you, this is a five minute chart, by the way. So it's really not telling you a heck of a lot, but it's giving you some early warning, early signs. I like it. Because even if it pops up a little bit, right, we don't need much. We just need a 50-point pullback. Boom. You get a nice solid 60, 70%, you know, 
on those on the on the calls. The VIX calls were moving nicely today. At one point, they were almost at 80 cents. They're very sensitive. They're cheap and they're very sensitive to movements. Because remember, the VIX is a derivative, right? So it it tends to move with many other different aspects of the market aside from just like oh market's down vix is up so looking at the if we if we looked at this vix for example on a daily one second it's great okay looking at it on a daily basis it's like a complete breakdown it's like you know it's like a, a price line where it was falling apart and it shows that eventually it wants to go to nine bucks that's on the daily in the meantime, by the time it gets, it never really gets, it only got to nine once. Most of the time, it tends to turn from around 9.32, whatever the case. But look how deep it's getting oversold. By looking at this chart on the, on the thing, can anyone tell me whether there's more room for the market to rise? Or is the market going to fall right away? By looking at, at the stochastics on the VIX, what is it telling you? It's pretty simple. Look at it and somebody volunteer to tell me. Looking at this chart here, right, of the VIX, which is a total breakdown. Is this telling you the market, the, the stock market on the other side, the overall market, it still has room to rise or is it telling you the market is fully as has reached the top? It's it's almost reached the top. You're getting the bottom of that stochastics. It's going to turn around and turn back up. Okay, so you're right. I appreciate that mentioned that. So bottom line is we're getting there, but we're not there yet. That's the correct answer. Because by the time it gets down here and then turn, that means the market is basically has a, a little bit more room to move, and I've showed you where it can move. Hey, hey Clue, one thing. Uh, on Dick Central, I was looking at the one month. It's in contango, so that could be really big. So it's in contango, higher or lower forward? L lower for the first month. It's up at 12 prints, 12 percent. If you go to Vic Central, the fr front I, month I know. is at 12 percent. Okay, so the front month is at 12 percent. Uh, yep. uh, you mean 12, 12 Vicks? You mean? No, 12 percentage. You look it up sometime. Go to Vic Central. I'll show I you. Know, but so ex it's in ex explain it to us in simple terms. So the uh, I understand what a contango is, but the contango simply means that the front end Vix for the next, let's say, month to three months is it higher or lower? It's got to be higher. 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 It's, a tw it's a twelve percent. That's huge. Okay. For so the you, front, front, for the yeah, when you say twelve percent, is it, it means twelve percent higher from where we are right now? Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. it's going to move the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The first, front, front months at 12%. Okay, yep. so 12% basically means we're going to go back simply to the upper end of, uh, basically 12, if you add 12% to where we closed that today. And guys, Corey just, uh, Golf here just brought out a fantastic point. So if the, the VIX closed today at, uh, uh, just picking from today's closing uh, print, the VIX closed today, I'm looking at my other screen here, at, uh, 9.73 okay so if i add 12 percent to it you're looking at 10.89 so all i'm talking about the vix mostly can get towards 11. so that's from here to here is 12 percent you understand what i'm saying so this is exactly what corey said but that 12 percent move can happen in one hour that's what i'm getting at so what i'm getting at is that the if, if, if what I think is going to happen uh, going into at least the first part of January, when we get that big tax loss selling, we're going to hit 13 VIX, we're going to overshoot, and we are going to hit this massive wall on the VIX at 14. So if somebody's placing their bets and slowly accumulating VIX for January, for example, as we get into December, you're in for a very nice profit move, but you got to buy them a couple of weeks out. Does everyone get it? Now, the cheaper you buy them, obviously, the bigger the move you'll get. But I don't know how much cheaper this VIX is going to get. Maybe a few more, you know, maybe 20 more cents. But then you make a move, let's say from the 950 level to 14, you are looking at a move. And if this is not difficult to understand, okay? Nine, four, so that's, uh, that's four and a half points. 
four and a half divided by 9.5, you're looking at a 47% move on the VIX. Guys, somebody says 47% move on the VIX. Now, that's not possible. Yeah, it's not possible. It happened in November right away. It happened in the first two weeks in November. It happened here. It happened in October, first two weeks. Now, going into the latter part of October. I'm sorry, from, uh, from the uh, last week in October, it jumped 47%. VIX moves like rocket ship because it's a derivative. It is not a stock. Okay? One little quark anywhere else. And I, I explain all the risks and stuff on, on the ACS group things, right? We have political risk. We have uh, 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 international risk. We have trade risk. A lot of risks out there, guys. A little bit more sentiment risk. Because people are feeling too comfortable. So all that is there. So my VIX chart, which I show, uh, and I'm going to show this one too, because this is also very easy on the eyes, but the other ones that I show is telling me that you want to start accumulating this. Always be insured. Somebody hit my car, my truck, while it was parked last week. Nobody was there, you know, I'd gone in somewhere and then came out. It's like it, probably a garbage truck hit. It took out the left fender like it was a bump thin. And this is a four by four, like, you know, boom. So it's in the garage right now. So always be insured, right? Thank God for insurance. Everything is taken care of. But that's the VIX, guys. So even if you're doing the long trades here and there, right? We're doing the tactical trades, swing trades, blah, blah, blah. Always have some VIX on the side from these levels. Remember, I haven't visited the VIX for a bit now. But now that it's getting to was this very cheap zone, and as you can clearly see here, this is getting nicely on the daily, so nicely over oversold. You better be insured because you're going to wake up one morning like we normally do. And the market's down 15, 20 handles. The S&P opens down. Dow Jones opens down 100 and keeps on collapsing. 200, 250. Don't forget, guys, this is why it happens. It happened in August. It happened in July. It happened in August. And then we went into this low vol environment, which is fine. We have had a lot of volatility. This doesn't show everything, right? So that's it. It's real simple to understand, guys. This is not rocket science. One last thing I'll show you, and then I'll take a quick question or two, is the chart of the S&P 500 for bullish traders, okay? Or us traders who are still bullish. I never get really 100% bearish, but... There you go. So look at this picture here. As far as I can see, we still got room to move. We are not overbought. This is your S&P daily. This is a very structured chart. We are not way off the line here. This is the orange line is the 34-day moving average. Remember I tell you, if you deviate too far away from the highways, let's say you are here where the S&P is at 2625. 2625, right? If you deviate here and we get towards 2650, the bears are finally giving up. They're like, oh boy, this market is definitely going higher. And then there's all you, you know, people are feeling a little too good or whatever the case may be. Then you are moving away from the highways. And that's known as, I know a lot of you, lot of you know that, but I have time to ask that question called standard deviation. When you move, too far away from the highways you're traveling in. And the highways you travel in are the 20 moving average, 20, 30, 4, 50. When you move too far away from any one of these major levels, you get a pullback. That's it. We moved away too fast, too quick. We got a pullback. And those pullbacks don't stop at these moving averages. If there's something, you know, a little bit rough, there's always some reason or the other, it goes bump. It goes down. And then, I'd like I put this big white arrow down here you get deep oversold you buy and you sit tight i really you know it's really as simple as that but so far as far as i can see unless you guys can see anything else all the lines and stuff are trending higher we haven't deviated too far away from the highways even though we are starting to the distance travel between the 50 day moving average which is at 2551 and right now we're at 2600 this is a standard deviation of maybe I would say four. I'm just kind of doing a visual thing here. This is a very, this is quite a large standard deviation. The distance traveled uh, between the 50 moving average, which is the main highway, to and so eventually what happens? The market pulls back a little bit. 
it tries to come in you know as long as it keeps on holding these highways which are the moving averages then you are good to go hold on for one second just Okay, so nothing more to explain there. Um, so we're st we still got room to move. Whatever quick shorts that we do and stuff, you got to be quick on it. Unless I, my other other uh, my uh, the, the the quad platform, which is on my other screen, I had some problems doing the copy and paste. There's a technical glitch going on. It should be fixed by tomorrow. That's why you didn't see those charts over the last day or so. Is showing me some severe overbought level. Severe overbought levels mean that we could easily correct anywhere from 60 to 100 points. Because remember, the quad platform that I use, and if you ever, any of you want to do free trials, like you know, like I said, I'll be happy to send you the link. Uh, many of you have started to do that. Is extremely precise for targeted traders. It's like sniper management. All right, that's serious. These charts and stuff are fine, but that. Is, I'm looking at it on my right hand side on one of my screens is absolutely it precise. It is way overbought. You know what I'm talking about. Slow stochastics are if I see a crossover down, it's going to happen very quickly. We're going to drop from 25.99 on the S&P down to 25.88, which is 11 points, roughly 66 out points real quick, real quick. That's only if the stochastics basically uh, uh, cross down so I'll be putting those things up and um, and then we'll basically you know go from uh, um, uh, go from there all right guys um, uh, any quick questions please hey, hey, hey clue you know on a, a lot of charts you do you do the Fibonacci from the bottom up but when you get close to the top do you ever do it the reverse down to see yes. where it also might come to sure I certainly do uh, Fibonacci's are extremely powerful from extreme positions of higher or lower so if I'm doing a retracement I'm saying okay the market can retrace or whatever so I'll give you an example for example uh, an example for example okay this is my spy chart sorry that was like a double example sent. This is very powerful. Oh boy, this is a uh, this is a spy chart. It's a this is a very powerful hammer off the lower channel. So look at this. I mean, the upper end of it is twenty two sixty three. I remember Trent asking me last week, right? Hey, you think the spy can get to two fifty nine? Remember that? Sorry. Yeah, I was laughing just because I remember that. Of course. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I remember that. It was a very good question. I said, yeah, there's a good possibility it will, based on my charts, not what I think. And it did. It just blew through it. Where the spy went to 259.99 and went to 260.20. And looking at this daily chart, <laughs> unless this uh, turns into a blood red candle on the right hand side, this has more room to move. So somebody might say, can you give me an idea how far it can move? Sure, I can. I can just do it like this. And tell you that 262 is the is the first level of major engagement, and the next one is going to be 263. Now, will it be just straight line up? I don't know. We're in that seasonal period where you could get these couple of these big red candles at the end of each day. So intraday there could be volatility, but if we keep on ending up like that, we'll end up at 262 by uh, by the end of the month. Pretty easy. Uh, yeah, so yes, in answer, to, in answer to your question, I do Fibonacci retracements on both ends, very extreme ends, and, uh, and, and of course, you know. So if I had to do a Fibonacci retracement on this on a 15 minute, uh, let me take all these lines out. One second. So if somebody said, so this is how you, you know, 
you could be looking uh, you could be looking i don't do fibonacci retracements on this s p and stuff because it hasn't been on a like a 90 degree angle up it zigzags around it creates patterns then it moves on so i wouldn't i personally wouldn't be doing a fibonacci retracement to see how far it can do but just to show you an example i'll do it So here's your fib. It's at 100 fib, right? It's already there. So this is one way of doing it. Or you can, or what what Golf was asking, Corey was asking, like if you want to do it from the top to bottom. I normally do it like this, is because you can basically see what the retracements are. Because this was the, let's say this was the zero level at 254, when the market basically had a big flash crash, which is not, you know, which was what a couple of Wednesdays ago, and. Um, Wednesday seemed to be the day that the markets always have this. Uh, well, this was a Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, nine o'clock. But this happened on Wednesday night. Very interesting. OK, um, so so you could see like, OK, if it's a sharp pullback, then we can engage 258.90. So for tactical traders who are looking to trade, you can use this as a, uh, you know, as a tool. And I'll put the chart up tomorrow for, for you guys to basically, you know, keep an eye on. This is one way of doing it. Now, the other way of doing it is flipping it. At, remember, this is full completion. So that's 100%. If we are assuming today was full completion of the move, short-term move, then that's 100%. We have achieved 100% potential, right? So what if we do this? What if we flip it and see? One second. Why isn't it flipping? No, I'll do it from here. Hold on. I was trying to get the. It's still a hundred. That's weird. Hold on. Okay, I got the zero up here. Perfect. So now I flipped it, right? So if I'm saying, okay, markets are now top, so 100% Fibonacci retracement would be back to 254. So notice we are at we. I put the the starting point is always zero. Got it, guys? The starting point is always zero. So here the starting point was zero because I was expecting the market to go higher after that move. So here I'm saying, okay, this is the starting point. How far can we go? Pretty much the same, 23.6 Fib. These are actual numbers, Fibonacci numbers. Want to know about the history of, you know, Fabio Fib, uh, what was his name? Uh, I think it was Fabio Fibonacci. He was a great mathematician um, back in the back in the centuries ago, right? And that's why the name comes from. So anyway, uh, so, so 23, so these are actual numbers. Fibonacci numbers repeat in nature, believe it or not. So and it's used in stock analysis too. So then you can see pretty much where uh, where a 50% Fibonacci retracement is normally standard procedure. When things go on a moonshot, like if a stock goes like this and then starts to pull back, then you can do a Fibonacci to see how how or, or, or where it can pull back. Or if a stock crashes, we have done this quite many many times. Then I do a Fibonacci retracement to see where the maximum bounces. Generally speaking, it it is capped at the 50% level before it hits massive resistance. So if something falls from uh, 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 let's say eight down to two, then the 50% retracement uh, would be uh, um, would be sorry eight minus two is six. So you basically uh, would be five. You get it? That's a 50% move uh, up here. So that's how Fibonacci's work. So just wanted to give you guys a quick idea because Corey asked the question. So do I want to do a Fibonacci retracement on the spies? Not necessarily because it's not a straight lineup. You know, it's more this type of stuff. But you can certainly do it. Fibonacci retracements are primarily for extreme conditions where a stock just zooms up or just crashes down. Then the Fibonacci's are far more reliable. Any other quick question before I sign off? Futures are already up to an equal. 
Features are up about two and a quarter, two points already, but it doesn't matter. It's uh, it's early. So yes, Nick, uh, any quick right. Go ahead. Yeah, my quick question is for the VIX or the UVXY um, calls, how far out in January should we get them? I, I started playing the VIX calls because they're cheaper and they move faster. The UVXY calls do the same thing. I like the VIX more because the VIX is a pure derivative and the UVXY is a ETF, exchange traded fund, right? So it's my, little, my platform doesn't have it. That's why I have yep. another platform. I guess I could use that one. But the, okay. VIX, the VIX calls, I, I would normally for protection, I would go out, uh, you know, in the case of the VIX calls, uh, I was uh, I was uh, uh, what's the ones that I mentioned two weeks out. So I would okay. keep, keep it a couple of weeks out or if things are getting really shaky, I'll buy this week's. So I've done it before. But the, this this week's one expires tomorrow. So obviously I didn't want to go there. You know what I'm saying? So I bought <laughs> I bought myself some time, uh, or you could buy January ones. But b problem, what's going to happen if you buy a bulk of it, the January ones, and then you get this big December Santa rally, then you're then you will be holding de depleting value on the January calls. You got it? Right. Yeah. So a week right. to ten days out, because the VIX has different strike dates other, other than options. So you you'll be if I, just by the ones that I'm mentioning the dates because I've already calculated out like you know what could happen and so I'm buying the short term ones right now. I'm not buying like months and months out because I don't even know what's going to happen months and months out. To be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, 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 clue. Let me add one last segment. You don't ever want to buy the UVXYs. They're ETNs. They're a decaying asset. You know, I like your VIX better. E the UVXY, you get killed on the decay. Yeah, on the decay, yes, because ETFs have the decay thing, so they're fine short term. If it's just a couple of days, you don't feel the decay on the thing. Just like you know, I've always said that. But if you're looking at it, uh, if you're looking at it. Um, uh, let's say a month or two out and you're sitting on those calls, believe me, just like Corey said, you'll decay, UVXY will be, you know, way up and your your calls would be like, what? You know what I'm saying? So okay. I just, just buy the pure derivative. It's like, like you know, my good Russian friends, you know, out there, you know, uh, the Brooklyn boys. Um, Thank God I don't see them that often. I'm just kidding. So those guys, you know, Russian vodka, they look like it clean. There's no smell. Just stick with the no smelly, no mixer stuff. Just clean with the clean derivative. The cleaner the derivative asset that you use. Forget the vodka analogy. It didn't come out right. So uh, what do you call the cleaner it is, the less headache you'll get. All right. And it's going to move. It's going to move. What I like about the VIX, you know, it's at 973, right? If it bumps to nine, let's say 980, you'll get a 10% bump on your money. That's pretty sweet, right? So. Okay, so there's no decay on there? No, because it's a clean derivative. It's the actual asset uh, class. Remember, decays, decays happen on ETFs and stuff because they are a second derivative of the first asset, right? Like, what Don't is an option? That. What is an option? An option is a derivative of the underlying stock right oh, right Ex exactly mm. so if you buy the under if you buy the direct uh, so if you so that's why options have decay right got it got exactly it, got but it. if okay. you buy the underlying stock yeah you're not going to make the 200 percent on it but you won't get decay either because there's no time value on it okay and the other reason why ets have decay because they they constantly re re uh, uh re uh, uh shuffle their net asset value versus the intrinsic value because the ETF never trades at what its real value is, right? An exchange traded fund will always trade at a discount or it's going to trade at a premium to what the actual value of the assets are underlying. Got it? Right. So sometimes okay. the people are too excited about an ETF, right? Like let's say, for example, emerging market ETF, like, oh, I want to be emerging market. So it will be trading at, a let's say, 40% premium to what the actual value of the stocks are in there. You understand what I'm saying? So what happens yes. is what happens is if it drops, then you're going to be dropping a lot quicker. And in the old days when I used to work on Wall Street, we loved buying ETFs because clients loved it. That's the reason why they make so many of them. You know, the only reason they have so many frigging ETFs is because it's easy to sell to clients. It's really a, like a, you know, it's not a scam, but honestly, you know, it's so easy to tell a client, oh, you want exposure to the emerging markets, Korea, Japan, Korea, all the, and not Japan's not an emerging market, but Korea, Vietnam, uh, Bangladesh, like all this stuff in one package. The client will say, yeah, yeah, that's exciting. It's a great, buy this ETF. You need to get a fat commission on it. And 
you just leave it there you know and if the all those markets go higher then obviously your your value goes higher too you're all very happy but if you're buying options on that stuff then that's a different story all right hey, hey, hey frank let me add one last thing if they want to look at it go to vic central Mm -hmm. And you want to buy it, if you buy it, you want to buy it in contango mode. And usually the third week of Wednesday is when it rolls over. I was looking the second month out, it drops down to 6%. So we don't want to go out too far. No, because yeah. because once we have, because you see, that uh, for people who are really like kind of wonky and want to learn that stuff, go to VIX Central, okay? But most traders, they don't want to like really go like, oh, I want to go to VIX Central, you know, do all that stuff. But VIXCentral.com is excellent. Now, the reasoning behind that in simple terms, just so you understand, is because the markets want to go higher, okay? So even if we get a quick tax loss selling, which I believe we're going to get in the first part of January, and barring any major incidences in the market, and you're looking at the weekly chart, this is a weekly chart of the stock market, okay, which I've discussed previously. This doesn't look like it's going to crash and burn. So bottom line is that we still have room to move, like I've said, towards 2700 on the S&P. And we could very well do that by the first quarter of 2017. 2700 is roughly another 700 points on the Dow Jones, which brings us to slightly above 24,000. And I think we reach a short-term top on that. Remember, tops are rolling processes. And looking at these charts here, nothing is telling you that there is some imminent danger of a massive massive crash. However, saying all that, the biggest flash crash has happened when we least expect it, right? So we can't be like sitting around thinking, oh, we can, you know, so we can project all we want, but I always keep a very close eye on my short-term charts also. But if we get a quick pull back in January, after that, the market moves higher. So that coincides with what Corey just said that two months out and three months out the vix is showing a little bit lower all right guys on that note i gotta get some sleep uh see you guys tomorrow in the morning i think this was extremely helpful i'm going to be put uh, uh uploading this uh, right now on the youtube channel two things i want from you guys focus more on technicals and tacticals number two get a heck of a lot more referrals we lost a few people over the past couple of weeks and i'm wondering why you know i know why because they are just not doing it right or they're just, not, they're just not participating or doing whatever they're doing wrong and the frustration leads to cancellations. That's the only reason, you know, because they're all very nice people. And uh, regardless of that, great referrals, all our greatest members have come from referrals, period. That's it. And give us some big shout outs on other forums, whether it's stock tweets, whether it's any other trading platforms, uh, forums that you guys might be involved with. Give us a couple of shout outs, especially when you're doing well. That's the least you can do. So that's the only two things I ask from you guys. God bless you all. Gotta go. Have a great evening.